Welcome back. Here's part two of the explainer of the Lewis model based on the Nestor reading material. In the first part of this explanation, we covered the basic model, uh, where we emphasize how in agriculture there's too much labor, and as a result, the, the marginal product of workers is zero, and that how this represents an opportunity for the industrial sector because there's an unlimited supply of cheap labor to industrialize. In this extension, we deal with two issues. So first of all, how are industrial wages determined? And that's important uh, because at some point, surplus labor disappears, but we're not going to a normal uh, sector, uh, a, a normal economy. Second, and most importantly, we're going to emphasize how the, the two sectors are not just linked by the movement of labor from agriculture to industry, but also through the food market. Now, to do that, we uh, move to an extended uh, exposition and that uses somewhat different figures than before. But here you can see that we are covering very similar uh, grounds. So the so first of all, there's the agricultural uh, sector that's covered in this. Uh, the, the production side is covered here at the bottom. Uh, in addition, there's a, the agricultural labor market, and that's also mapped into this first figure. Then we have the uh, then we have the two figures at the top on the industrial sector. So there we are mostly looking at the at the labor markets. So we have the demand curve shifting outwards. We have a, a labor supply curve, which um, extends further than in the basic model. Um, but the most novel feature is the uh, food uh, markets uh, for agricultural surplus. So that's what we'll also focus on. Now. In these figures, first of all, here have the agricultural production and labor market side. So if we uh, are here at the left-hand side point, everybody is working in agriculture, and we're assuming that this is the starting point for the model. At this point, we are at a, we are well past uh, the flat phase of the production function. So as you can see, for this entire piece. Uh, the, the labor that's added when moving from uh, point B here to point A there uh, adds zero to agricultural output. So that's why this is the surplus labor phase. Now in this surplus labor phase, we have total production given by this vertical line, total labor given by the horizontal. So we have the W bar as the average product. So total production divided by total labor. Uh, so this W bar is the slope of this diagonal line, and that's going to be the ag average product of agricultural workers and their and thus their uh, wage in the um, in the agricultural sector. Now in this first phase, the wage is constant and uh, and production doesn't drop even when workers are moving to the industrial sector. In the second phase, we are uh, we have removed so many workers that their marginal product turns positive. But this, the, but the marginal product is still lower than the average product here, this W bar. Um, so we we call this phase disguised unemployment because the workers. Uh, are earning less than their marginal product, so they are not uh, they're not fully employed, if you want. Um, but this is still not a traditional normal sector. Now, only after this, when when uh, we're at point C, is the 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 average product starts to exceed the marginal product. So from this point onwards we will see increasing wages in agriculture. At this point, we are in the commercialization phase and uh, the agricultural sector behaves just like the industrial sector. Now then to the main novel part, um, and that has to do with the concept of average agricultural surplus. Um, and the question, and that's, 
what this tries to, to illustrate is uh, how much production the marginal worker can take with him if he leaves agriculture. Now, the first worker to leave um, has an average product of W bar, as shown here, and this average uh, uh, and this uh, W bar uh, is does the output that's uh, that is that's that this worker used to represent and could in principle take with him uh, when he moves to the to the city. Now, in this initial phase, the um, the agricultural uh, uh, the this average agricultural surplus is constant because when workers are moved from agriculture to industry, uh, total agricultural production doesn't fall. So uh, no production is lost. So every worker could in principle take W bar with him in, in, uh, in, in food production and uh, take that with him to the city. Um, as a result of this, the uh, food prices remain constant because there is a constant supply of, uh, of, of food. There's no... Um, the total uh, total production does not decline. Um, so in the initial phase, uh, there's a constant surplus and a constant agricultural price. Now, moving on, we get declining average surpluses because as workers continue to move to industry, total agricultural production starts to fall. Um, so every worker, uh, when, when a worker leaves, uh, agricultural production drops. So even though uh, their ag average product is taken with them, total production also declines. So there's a lower average surplus. Um, and thus, because there's lower surplus, there's less production, we get rising prices. So then how does this tie together um, with the what happens in industry? Well, that's uh, that's best understood by uh, writing the wages in industry as the wages in agriculture times prices of agricultural products. So in other words, as long as industrial workers are paid enough to compensate them for the, the income they, they leave behind in agriculture, so their average product is WA, and they can pay for food, uh, they're willing to move to industry. Now, this also illustrates what happens as industrialization progresses. Um, agricultural surplus declines, the price of food starts to rise, and uh, the, uh, the wages in industry start to increase. So in this first phase, in the second phase uh, that we saw here, we have increasing um, we have increasing agricultural prices that continues in the, into, the, uh, into the final phase, the commercialization phase. Um, as we saw before that, when the agricultural sector hits the uh, commercialization phase, then um, we uh, also start to see increasing wages in agriculture. So from that, we know that wages in industry will start to rise ever more rapidly. Now, note there are two important assumptions here. First, the price of food is domestically determined. So there's no trade, no imports of food. Second, uh, and that's another crucial thing, the, as workers move, to, uh, move out of agriculture, the average product of the remaining workers increases. Uh, so if you were to draw a diagonal line to the origin here, they have a much higher average product. Yet we assume that this W bar remains the prevailing income of the agricultural sector throughout the first two phases. So both in the surplus labor and in the disguised unemployment phase, W bar remains the average income. So how to think about that? Well, you could consider it a tax or in other ways uh, that the government uh, appropriates the surplus and uses it to fund, uh, to keep uh, industrial wages low. 
Now, then the final bit uh, ties together uh, the, 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 the missing pieces. So what we have here is, as before, the, uh, the demand <clears throat> curves for industrial labor. And as investment progresses, these shift outwards. Um, we have, as in the basic model, uh, first the horizontal supply curve, and that's an unlimited supply of labor phase, uh, <clears throat> where total agricultural production remains constant. So the wages in industry also remain constant. In the second phase, the price of food starts to increase. So the price of uh, so the wages of industrial workers has to increase. And as you can see, the industrial labor supply curve starts to increase as well. Now, this, sl this slows down the pace of industrialization. And that's best seen here. So if the, the supply curve had remained horizontal, then at this uh, demand curve, we would have Z prime number of industrial workers. However, because of the rising food prices and thus the rising uh, industrial wages, the labor supply curve is up here and only Z uh, late workers are employed in industry. So that drives home the point that if there is a policy that can help keep down the, the late supply curve of labor, keep it flat or horizontal for longer, the pace of industrialization, at least in this model, would increase. Okay, that's it for these explainers. Um, thank you.